Thank you so much. Good evening, everyone. Good evening, Commissioner Jerrica Richardson. Uh, today is another uh, opportunity for us to learn of another stakeholder, especially concerning water uh, for the Sustainability Environmental Advocacy Project. And for those that have been in this session for the past months, welcome back. For those that are new, we welcome you and thank you for joining us tonight. If you could please like uh, share your name and your um, or your organization in the chat, that would be very helpful. And uh, also your questions as uh, the presentation is going on so that it will be addressed uh, by Dr. Chris Manganello after his uh, presentation. So, so just be a, a quick briefer on what is a sustainability environmental advocacy project under the initiative of Commissioner Jerrica Richardson. So tonight we're gonna have welcome message and then the presentation discussion Q and A. And of course, our next steps, the engagement commitment. So uh, for, 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 for the new ones, the project goal is really to engage members of the community to participate in the decision-making process of the county and identify the unique needs that would otherwise go unnoticed in the area of sustainability. And this is the core part of the sustainability agenda uh, that the Commissioner Jerrica has laid out in the start of her office. Our project objectives, so number one, hopefully we could have at least maybe one for, for this year, the Cub Sustainability Forum and the Sustainability Awards. And of course, engaging social groups, businesses uh, who are interested in the area of sustainability and the uh, environmental justice agreement. This is, uh, this is one of uh, the core uh, uh, legislative agenda that Commissioner Jerrica Richardson is really trying to have. For, for the county, and that's why we do engagement stakeholders, for engagement of the stakeholders from the community. And hopefully um, we would also learn how Cobb County at the level of the county offices, where and how can this be done? Because sustainability of all of these efforts will definitely be lodging into the organization that has the organizational capacity to run it. So it's sustainability environmental advocacy is again all about soil, water, air, and how all of these three factors will lead and uh, contribute towards that environmental justice agreement that uh, Commissioner Jerrica is trying to push. So for the past, uh, like since last year, we've had some presentations. It can be very, very slow because of uh, so many factors that are beyond our control, but at least we could say that we have representative of community like our Diocese of Atlanta, Citizens Climate Lobby, which is specific into the interest of air, Friends of Bolton Parks, which has air, of course, water, and also soil. And they're a group that is um, not literally in Cobb County, but because Chattahoochee is a shared resource, that is where their, their interest is and how to collaborate with Cobb County. And Connecting Cobb is one of the team of Commissioner Jerrica Richardson, really, when she uh, 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 was in, into this office of how can Cobb connect and the sustainability awards is not even exclusive to Cobb County. It can be like metropolitan Atlanta. And we're trying to reserve one hopefully for the Cobb County level, keep Cobb beautiful and the, the office that's concerned for how to move forward with all of these presentations and engaging all of these uh, key um, organizations that have participated for the series. And we hope to have this done uh, within the next uh, month or so. So we'll thank you for uh, being here tonight. And I wanted to share now uh, this time for introduction of our beloved commissioner, Jerrica Richardson, to just give an insight. And I know that she will reserve her questions and answers later on after the presentation. Commissioner Jerrica. Thank you, Arjo. And of course, none of this is possible without all of your hard work and uh, research to try to engage members of the community. So thank you for that. And um, really wanted to say thank you all for joining in on today's call. This is an opportunity to learn about another organization that is present within our community looking to service the area of sustainability, whether directly or indirectly. And the idea is to learn what those initiatives are see where they align with the office's initiatives as well, and just make sure that we're holistic in our thinking as we gear up towards the actual um, session to craft the environmental justice agreement. 
And just to reiterate what that is, it's a list of policies, procedures, and investments that the county can make in order to empower residents regarding their water, soil, and air. Of course, we face a lot of challenges in our community, so this is a strategic way to go about doing that. So what I'm listening for, where there can be partnerships, where there's alignment, where there can be um, you know, reduction of having duplicative efforts, and really just overall passion and creativity. So uh, please be, be open and, and, and mindful that this is an organization that has contributed to the community, as were the other ones that have been on these SEEP calls as well. And certainly feel free to ask your questions um, to the organization towards the end. And I, like uh, Arjo said, I will reserve my comments for the end um, after everyone's had a chance to, to speak and engage. And then I'll share where I think there are some real opportunities uh, for what direction we're going. And we'll ask for a commitment to helping us build the environmental justice agreement. Thank you so Thank you. much, Commissioner Jerica Richardson. So now to, it's an honor to actually present our speaker for tonight, Dr. Chris Manganello of the Chattahoochee River Keeper, and he is the Water Policy Director there. I just came to know him through Ms. Dr. Jim Malton, who engaged us for in the past month, especially during the Chattahoochee uh, sweep, uh, sweep the Hooch uh, event, and then Dr. Chris was there in a group, in the group of volunteers that signed up for the Bolton, Bolton site. And I, I told him about this engagement. And as I stressed earlier, Chattahoochee is such a huge resource that is shared across um, the, the, the state. And I think it would be great to learn and draw from them. So without much ado, here's Dr. Chris Manganello, the Water Policy Director of Chattahoochee Riverkeeper. Thank you so much uh, for having me here, Arjo and uh, Commissioner Richardson. It's nice to meet you. Appreciate you kind of convening these uh, these meetings and uh, you know working on the sustainability um, environmental advocacy project. Um, so yeah, I look forward to um, kind of you know talking and answering any questions you have after the presentation. Um, so let's see. Uh, let me go ahead and she up. Uh, the PowerPoint here. He's probably not seeing the right screen. Uh, let's see. Let's try that again. All right. Good. Wonderful. All right. Um, great. Um, well, yes. Um, again, you know, thanks for having me here um, uh, today, and um, we're going to talk about uh, Chattahoochee Riverkeeper. Um, really, my goal is is twofold. Uh, you know, I want to first tell you who Chattahoochee Riverkeeper is, what we do, um, uh, and and then you know, in the second thing, I'm sorry, is um, first thing is tell you who we are, and the second one is tell you what we do. Um, and uh, you know, I I picked the topics today because I think uh, they highlight um, the things that. Um, you know that you know, in some ways, you know, county commissioners and, and local governments uh, can have some influence upon, um, and they also reflect the topics uh, that uh, we can certainly help with uh, based on our expertise. And I also think that the the kind of programs and things that I'm going to talk about today, they also they highlight uh, issues that kind of align with the elements of the sustainability environmental advocacy plan um, and kind of this anticipated environmental justice agreement. Um, so again, you know, just kind of tell you who we are and then what we do and how I think there's alignment, uh, you know, in terms of things you're interested in, things that uh, we, we work on. All right, so first off, um, you know, who are we? You know, I'm, I am Chris Manganello. I'm Chattahoochee Riverkeeper's Water Policy Director. I've been in uh, Chattahoochee Riverkeeper uh, doing this job for about five years. Prior to that, I was working uh, for a statewide organization called Georgia River Network for about five years. And you know, really, in those you know ten years or so, I've been involved in water policy, both kind of statewide and also regionally, um, here uh, more in the Atlanta and the Chattahoochee River region. Um, but I, you know, I kind of done, I do a variety of things, um, and um, I'll kind of get to that as, as we're as we're talking through this. Uh, but organizationally, Chattahoochee River Keeper has been around since 1994. Uh, we are part of a larger um, water keeper movement. There are about nine river keepers in Georgia, um, and there are something like 350 river keepers and water keepers all over the world. Uh, it is an international movement. 
Uh, and uh, Chattahoochee Riverkeeper was the 11th um, kind of group to be a part of Waterkeeper back in 1994. Um, we have uh, organization Chattahoochee Riverkeeper about 10,000 members or so spread throughout the whole Chattahoochee River Basin. We have offices um, in Gainesville up uh, near Lake Lanier uh, in what we call the headwaters. Uh, we obviously have our office here in Atlanta, which is on the west side of the city. And then we have an office in LaGrange, um, which is in West Point, uh, or excuse me, near West Point uh, Lake and the Alabama line. Programmatically, uh, which I'll, I'll get into more details about that, but real quick, you know, nonprofit, uh, we do advocacy work. Um, that's a lot of what I do. It's a picture of me on the far right. Um, I spend time down at the General Assembly. Uh, we work with citizen lobbyists uh, to kind of influence, um, you know, uh, uh, environmental legislation, um, usually trying to make sure it doesn't get any worse. And um, we kind of have to deal with a lot of rollbacks, uh, but we also um, are able to push some good things forward. Um, we also have an education program, which you kind of see pictured there in the middle. Um, we uh, have two boats that we take uh, uh, elementary and junior high school students out onto Lakes Lanier and West Point Lake, and we do kind of basic, you know, what's the water cycle, what happens when the rain hits the land, and uh, all the water rolls off the land into the lake and the river, and we, you know, do some kind of basic, um, you know, uh, water science to kind of help them understand where water comes from and how we use it and how important it is. Um, and then on the far left there, um, we have a, um, I'll get more into the, some of the details about um, what we call our neighborhood water watch program, which is a, a volunteer uh, water quality monitoring program. Um, and, and kind of, um, you know, we, which pick, what, what is pictured here is a major sewer line spill. And we find about 12 of these a year. And I'll kind of get into some more of the details about, about that particular program. Um, but that is Chattahoochee Riverkeeper in a nutshell. Um, you know, our mission is to make sure there's enough water in the Chattahoochee River for all the communities and the people uh, that, that rely on the river, as well as um, make sure there's enough water in the river to support the actual environment itself. But why do we do what we do? Um, you know, really for the river's future and its sustainability. Um, the Chattahoochee River is a part of, um, you see on this map on the left, the Chattahoochee is a part of a larger set of rivers. That's uh, the Apalachicola Chattahoochee Flint river basin. The Chattahoochee is in the blue there. It flows from, like I said, the, you know, the, the southern Blue Ridge in the mountains down through Atlanta and through Columbus. Uh, and then it eventually meets up with what's called the Flint River, which is in brown there. And those two rivers come together at the Florida-Georgia state line and form a third river called the Apalachicola River, which flows through the Florida panhandle into the Gulf of Mexico. Um, and so these, you know, the Chattahoochee River is a part of a larger system um, so you know, we work not just for the Chattahoochee River in Georgia, but for the Chattahoochee River in Georgia, Alabama, and its influence um, in, in Florida as well. But the Chattahoochee River itself, again, that kind of section in blue, there are um, at least 5 million people that live just in the Chattahoochee River Basin alone. There are you know, over 100 wastewater treatment plants. Um, there are energy producing facilities, um, both hydroelectric power dams, natural gas, um, a coal-fired power plant and a nuclear power plant. You know, it's important to understand that you know when we flip on a light switch, we are using water. Uh, it takes water to generate electricity, um, and so you know we don't just need water for five million people to drink and you know to support their commercial business. We also need the water to assimilate waste, and we need the water to generate electricity. So water is in, important for all these different reasons. And then, of course, the further south you get in the Chattahoochee River Basin, um, agriculture becomes a big part. Um, agriculture is the second largest, or excuse me, is the largest industry in the state uh, when you kind of look at it as a um, total economic um, um, kind of output. Um, so agriculture is a big, um, a big user of water, uh, and we need to make sure we have enough of it um, in that kind of bread basket of Georgia in the southern portion of the Chattahoochee and Flint Rivers. Then of course we need water for recreation, for pleasure, for leisure, enjoyment. People like to swim, they like to fish for, for trout and for bass. So, you know, Chattahoochee Riverkeeper, we, we do all the work we do, uh, both for water quality and for, you know, make sure there's enough um, water supply and water actually in the river for all these reasons uh, for today and for the future, of course. But we also, we also do it because we know like climate change is real. It is happening. Uh, we are familiar with uh, what I would call new normals um, for folks that have been here for a while, we had our record-breaking drought in 2007. It's a picture of Lake Lanier on the left. Uh, normally, uh, when 
when we have a lot of water in Lake Lanier, you don't see that kind of muddy large like bank uh, between the trees and the water. That's usually covered with water. Um, but in, in 2007 and eight, the, the Lake Lanier, our, our primary drinking water supply source here in, in Atlanta, um, was, was reached its lowest level. And there was a, a quick, a quick weather whiplash, if you will. In 2009, we had the record flooding on the Chattahoochee River, and this is a picture of Six Flags uh, in the southern portion of the county, just by I-20, uh, Six Flags underwater because the Chattahoochee River flooded. This is the same uh, point where there was a significant and serious flooding in Austell and other places in Cobb County as well. Uh, there were a few dozen fat fatalities across the metro region. But this kind of new normal of, of, of weather whiplash from drought to flood um, is, is a sign that we are dealing with a cl changing climate and, and we anticipate uh, you know, deeper and drier droughts and we anticipate uh, kind of extreme uh, rainfall as well in the future. And so the work that we do uh, is also designed to you know, get people thinking about how we can um, live with this new world, this new normal, as well as the things that we can do to mitigate it as well. So uh, those are the reasons we, we do what we do is, you know, all the things that uh, people need the river for, as well as, you know, trying to make the river sustainable and resilient in the future. Um, ooh, wrong direction. In terms of the, like the programs, like what do we actually do like day in and day out uh, for the river? Uh, one of our big programs is called Neighborhood Water Watch. And this is one of our water quality programs. Most of the programs I'll be talking about today have to deal with water quality. The Neighborhood Water Watch program, um, kind of an easy way to kind of describe how people get involved in this um, is that, you know, it's very frequent that we will sometimes, you know, people will call us and say, hey, there's a creek in my neighborhood. Is the water clean? And, you know, we may go, we, we, we can go out and we can test it. And, um, and usually, you know, we, we can develop a relationship with somebody and, and we, we train them uh, to become a volunteer for us. And they will uh, collect water samples and, and bring them to our lab, which we have pictured here. On the right, uh, we have a lab in each one of our offices, and we can run basic water quality tests um, to, to look really primarily for bacteria, is what we're looking for. And you know, we have about 128 volunteers working throughout the Chattahoochee River Basin today. Uh, we've got 200 sites where people take water quality samples from, or that we, we, we ourselves uh, sample from. Um, and so, like I said, you know, we kind of train people, as you see on the left, to take the samples. They can bring them to our labs. We, we monitor and we, 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 we test the sample. And then what I kind of have the, the kind of backdrop here behind those pictures is we keep a database. And so we log all the data. Um, again, we're primarily looking at um, E. coli. It's an indicator of you know, bacteria in the water. Uh, and then, you know, if we, because we keep this data, we have a pretty good baseline. And so when we see bacteria spike at certain sites, we can go out and we do an investigation where we get out and walk in the stream. Um, and we find things like broken sewer lines, like that picture I showed earlier. Uh, and we find about 12 broken sewer lines on an annual basis. You know, sewer lines, um, they run across creeks, they run alongside creeks. Creeks flood in the, in, the, in, the, in the spring you know, when we get rains, uh, trees fall over and break the pipes. And, and so we, we find these things and we take pictures of them and we reach out to the jurisdiction, uh, the county or the, or the water utility and say, hey, we found this. Uh, and then the jurisdiction goes out and fixes it. And then that resolves usually the bacteria problem that we discovered. And so again, this is a, is a, is a neighborhood water watch program. Um, we're really pleased that we've, we've had volunteers that have worked with us for a long time and to help us find um, the problems that we, that we find. In terms of opportunities that are out there, um, I'll be honest, you know, uh, we don't have a whole lot of sites in Cobb County. Um, so certainly if you have constituents that are asking questions about water quality, you can put them in touch with us and we can talk with them. Um, I know that, um, uh, you know, and so we can, we can help them understand and we can train them, teach water samples, and they can kind of become part of our neighborhood water watch program. Um, I also, uh, you know, when I was looking through kind of the, um, uh, all the, the different things that in the environmental um, sustainability advocacy uh, plan, that there is kind of an interest in maybe some real time water quality data. And that is something we do have some remote sensors um, that are um, kind of log some very basic water quality data. Um, and we certainly uh, work with the National Park Service in the Chattahoochee River National Recreation Area as well uh, to, to collect uh, water quality samples. And, and so we, we do collect 
all this data for water quality that we collect, we do present public facing um, online for, for people to look at and see. Um, so we can certainly kind of talk about you know uh, future opportunities to to maybe um, to to help you achieve maybe what you're interested in looking for as well. So that's the neighborhood water watch program. Um, we also do, um, unfortunately, there's a lot of trash uh, in, in the river. Um, and so uh, trash free, trash free Chattahoochee is another project uh, kind of, or, or excuse me, program that we work on. Um, you know, we annually, um, you know, we, we removed Chattahoochee Riverkeeper and, you know, our 2000 volunteers in 2021, we removed something like 60 tons of garbage from the Chattahoochee River uh, and its tributaries. Uh, this is a picture of a trash trap. Um, it's uh, set up to catch trash as it floats downstream. Um, we have about eight traps in operation at different parts of the Chattahoochee River Basin today. Um, you know, in 2019 uh, it was probably, I think, when we put our first, maybe 2018, we put our first traps in the water and uh, we started collecting data. And so in September of 2020, uh, we developed this kind of feasibility guide that you see pictured on the left. It's, it's a report actually in the, the PDF that I, I shared. It's a, if you just click on it, there's a link and it'll open up to that report. But that report basically lays out, um, you know, if, if you're interested in establishing a, a litter trap uh, somewhere, it kind of walks through the different things to, to contemplate, like the location, um, you know, how easy is it get to? Um, as you can see this trap pictured here, it's right by the road. It's easy to get into the stream. It's not deep because you know, if you've got these traps, you have to be able to get the garbage out. So that kind of the location and thinking about uh, where the trap is going to be is important. Um, so certainly kind of, you know, thinking about opportunity in the future, um, we have um, um, somebody who just, who manages all of our trash traps, um, who's um, um, the kind of the expert, if you will, when it comes to the traps and their placement and their operation, we're happy to put you in touch with those folks. And then certainly um, I'm, I'm not in charge of organizing all of our actual river cleanups, uh, but I'm sure that we've worked with Keep Cobb Beautiful uh, to help organize some of the sites. And, and if for some reason we haven't, uh, then we can certainly um, um, you know, make sure that we make those connections. So uh, Neighborhood Water Watch, trash, um, kind of another water quality um, element that uh, we've been working on for a long time um, is stormwater, right? When, when it rains, um, all the water hits the pavement, the parking lot, or your lawns, and it just kind of picks up what's ever on the ground and flushes it into the street, into the gutters. Uh, and in, you know, 99% of, of, of the places in the world, all that stormwater, all that rainwater just ends up in a creek. It doesn't get treated uh, prior to ending up in a creek. And so uh, we call all this pollution non-point source pollution, right? It doesn't come from any one particular source or any one particular place. It comes from our yards, it comes from our driveways, it comes from our parking lots. And so um, non-point source pollution is in some ways um, a big challenge uh, for water quality. Um, again, thinking about it from a climate perspective, if we're gonna get you know, more intense rainfall, uh, we could uh, kind of be dealing with um, you know, these big flush events um, after big heavy rainfalls. And one of the ways to mitigate for that is to invest in green infrastructure. And the, the picture you see here on the right is Cook Park. It's in uh, kind of the headwaters of Proctor Creek on the west side of Atlanta, um, kind of right next to the World Congress Center and Mercedes-Benz Stadium. And this is a, a facility that was designed to slow rainwater down, if you will, uh, designed to kind of catch that first flush of stormwater and uh, allow that water to um, or any non-point source pollutants in that water to kind of settle out before it ends up in Proctor Creek. And so um, Chattahoochee Riverkeeper, we've been involved in a number of green infrastructure projects, um, you know, of this scale and this one in particular, we helped raise some money to build it. Uh, it is a city of Atlanta project, but um, there were many nonprofit partners that helped raise money uh, to fundraise to build the project. Um, and we've also been involved in much smaller projects um, and, and again, you know, uh, one of my colleagues in 2019 who was involved in a number of, of projects, he, he developed the report that you see on the left. Again, the PDF, you click on it, you can open it up. And it kind of just talks about case studies uh, for stormwater management um, in Atlanta and, and to highlight the benefits of, of green infrastructure. Um, so again, just kind of thinking about opportunities. Um, we can certainly, you know, talk to folks 
uh, in Cobb County that are interested in figuring out how to um, kind of move green infrastructure along. And we'd also, um, you know, we, we can offer tours of some of these green infrastructure projects as well and, um, and, and take folks around and, and show them um, you know, how, these, how these facilities work and, um, and how they benefit the neighborhood. All right, so my last um, water quality um, topic is um, uh, coal ash, which um, you know, plant McDonough in the southern uh, uh, kind of just um, the southern portion of um, Cobb County, right along the Chattahoochee River, um, in um, in Vinings. Um, plant McDonough Atkinson uh, originally was built in the 1930s as a coal-fired plant. Uh, it operated as a coal-fired plant until uh, the mid you know, right around 2008, 2010. Um, the coal facility was retired, the coal operation was retired and was replaced with a natural gas power plant. Um, so the, the plant McDonough is still generating electricity, but not coal anymore, it's just natural gas. But as I mentioned before, um, you know, when we turn on the light switch, um, you know, uh, when we generate electricity and we use electricity, we're also using water. Uh, and, and the primary use of water in these facilities, these energy facilities, is, is to cool the equipment. Because when you generate electricity, um, equipment gets very hot. And so river water is withdrawn. Uh, it, it's run through the, 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 the plant to cool equipment down. And then it's discharged um, at a higher temperature. Um, and so um, when it comes to coal ash, um, you know, Coal ash is um, is the byproduct of burning coal to generate electricity, and there are a number of kind of you know toxic components in it. Um, and that coal ash has been stored historically in basically just a hole in the ground. And um, often there's there there has been water uh, in these coal ash ponds. And so since um, you know roughly 2015 or so. <clears throat> Georgia Power uh, and utilities and power companies all over the country have been retiring all their coal plants as well as uh, moving the coal ash into permanent storage. Um, and so at, <clears throat> excuse me, at Plant McDonough and, uh, and other sites in the Chattahoochee River uh, Basin, that coal ash is, is going to be stored in these pits. They're dewatering it, but um, it will be stored, uh, the coal ash will be Kind of capped, if you will, to put a kind of a, a lid on it, if you will, uh, and it will be stored in this kind of unlined pit in the ground. Uh, our concern is that um, the ash, because it is an unlined uh, hole in the ground, that the ash can continue to kind of interact with groundwater. Uh, and you know, according to Georgia Power's data, uh, again, they are kind of as a part of their closure process, they collect water quality and, and monitoring data and they post it publicly. And according to Georgia Power's data, they know that they have certain, um, you know, uh, chemical constituents that are circulating in groundwater. Um, and um, it was in, I believe, 2001, uh, oh no, I'm sorry, 2019 or 2020 that they, the Georgia Power acknowledged that some of their constituents had actually moved beyond the property line and onto um, Cobb County right of way. And it's my understanding that they have been, um, there's some monitoring wells that are um, operating on Cobb County property. And um, honestly, it, it's, it's unclear to us at Chattahoochee Riverkeeper uh, what has been the kind of the outcome of those monitoring wells. And so um, that's something we, we would love to have more information about. Um, but certainly um, one other thing that um, has been asked of other local governments around some of these coal ash facilities is that they consider um, passing resolutions asking for um, you know, a more bust storage for long term of, of, of the coal ash itself. So, um, so yes, yeah, so local re resolution on cleanup um, and also um, our interest with is, is kind of having a better understanding of what's happened on the north side of the plant on Cobb County's um, property. So uh, as kind of aside from these water quality things that I've talked about, um, you know, there is this other big piece to talk, think about energy and um, and how to make the Chattahoochee River sustainable. Um, a lot of the work I do um, focuses on water conservation and efficiency. You know, how can we use the water that we use every day in our homes and our businesses? How can we use it more efficiently uh, and, and, and conserve that water in such a way that we don't have to withdraw more and more water from the river? 
uh, or from like linear, right? So the, the, the less water that we, um, that we use in our homes, that we, you know, less water that we use outdoors, that means that, that there's more water in the river for all the other needs um, um, uh, to, to, to be met. And, and so the, the report that I, I, I produced on the left here is, is really about kind of, you know, what are the conservation successes and opportunities that, that, um, that you know, we can document and that are possible uh, for the Chattahoochee River. And so I looked at a number of, of uh, utilities and, and um, local governments and kind of just kind of, you know, assessed uh, what, what folks are doing, uh, you know, low flow toilets and other fixtures and uh, what other kind of conservation stories, as well as, you know, what sort of policies, you know, you know what would happen um, if we changed the state plumbing code and, and how could we achieve conservation efficiency um, through, through kind of more policy changes as opposed to just, you know, how people behave. Um, and so that's a, a big part of, of the report on the left. But when it comes to climate change, it's always been a little more tricky to, to kind of think about how a water utility and a local government could um, kind of um, reduce their carbon footprint. And so um, there are ways that, that local utilities and governments can do that. And so there's a, a picture on the left is, um, is of solar panels. And so our drinking water, it comes from the river. We have to pump the water out of the river we have to treat it in, a, in a, um, a water treatment plant, which takes a lot of energy. And then we put it in the pipes and we pump it to people's homes. And then people use it, uh, use the water, and then it goes back into pipes again and it gets pumped to another wastewater treatment plant where um, the water gets cleaned up and then discharged back into the river, right? All of those processes between pulling the water out of the river, getting the river to my house, and then, I'm sorry, getting the water to my house so I can use it and then getting the, the water safely back into the river, all of that uses a tremendous amount of energy. And so um, the water industry, the water utility industry has a very large carbon, in, uh, carbon footprint. And one of the ways that the industry is beginning to think about how to mitigate that is to look at alternative energy sources. And so for example, these solar panels are at a wastewater treatment plant in um, Clark County, Athens, Clark County. Uh, but there are examples. This is something the city of Atlanta is also embarking on. They're going to build some solar from sol some solar erect some solar panels at some of their wastewater treatment plants in order to reduce their carbon footprint because of how much energy the water kind of sector requires. And so, this to me seems like a a, a great opportunity for local governments and utilities to think about is to um, how can they you know develop um, um, kind of their own energy sources you know, on site, if they already have the property on kind of county property, if you will, uh, to, 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 um, to kind of reduce the carbon footprint of the water utility. And there's, there's all sorts of other things that um, a water utility and local governments can do, right? And again, thinking about uh, something that aligns with uh, something that I saw in the kind of the environmental uh, uh, project plan that you put forward is the idea of electrifying the fleet of, of vehicles, you know, county vehicles, you know, you know electrifying those is a is one way, of course, to kind of again reduce um, the um, the fossil fuel carbon footprint um, of, of a local government and a water utility. Um, so, um, lots of great opportunities when it comes to water conservation and efficiency. Cobb Water is a is a great example statewide. They are held up repeatedly as as doing the right thing when it comes to water conservation and efficiency. Um, I've, I'm familiar with some of the folks at Cobb Water and uh, the uh, Cobb County Marietta Water Authority of um, worked with them for a number of years, and they do a great job. And so, um, just kind of supporting them um, is is just an important thing to do in the future. You know, making sure that they have the resources they have to, to keep doing the, um, the kind of great job they've been doing when it comes to water use and, and conservation. Um, so, that to me, um, kind of talking through this kind of these different water quality options and, and programs that we do, neighborhood water watch, um, thinking, thinking about storm water. Uh, coal ash, um, and then also uh, water conservation and efficiency and, and what these things uh, mean uh, in kind of this changing context of climate. Um, you know, these are all the things that we work on and I'm happy to talk more in detail about any of these opportunities and take any questions um, so that um, you can help us keep as much water in the Chattahoochee um, that all the folks downstream and um, will benefit from. So with that, I'll, um, I will stop sharing my screen and happy to take any questions. Awesome. <laughs> I think that is a great, great learning. Um, I am very much amazed of how vast of an opportunity it is 
indeed that your organization is able to serve not only Cobb County, not only across, you know, the geographic boundary of Georgia, but even across the strength, the length of the reach of Chattahoochee River. So with that, uh, Commissioner Jerrica Richardson, your insights. And of course, we wanted everyone to um, share your, your questions and the learning. Yeah, this is, I want everyone else to engage before I give my comments. I've got a page full of <laughs> opportunities. Okay. okay, well, Chris, this is Jim. Um, we're trying to get the level of cleanliness in the water up from fishing level up to recreational level, correct? That's right. So where we can actually get in the river, swim in it, uh, and feel much better. And what's that going to take from Commissioner Richardson and that end? Well, I think, um, let's see, what we've been able to do, um, because the, um, the, the, the river below Atlanta has improved in terms of its water quality, there's no doubt, I mean, since the 1990s. And EPD has changed some of those um, those designations that you're talking about, Jim. So we've been successful when we petitioned uh, downstream of Atlanta uh, to have what are called kind of designated uses upgraded from fishing to recreation. Um, and I think um, as far as what a commissioner can do, I mean, I, I, again, I think it goes back to, um, you know, the, the actual, you know, Cobb water is, is gonna be responsible for any upgrades and changes that they have to make at their wastewater treatment plant in order to meet any new. Um, so, I mean, the wastewater plant discharges uh, treated water into the Chattahoochee River. And so, um, you know, as we move forward into the future, you know, if when COP water has to upgrade, um, you know, or change their permit and upgrade their facilities, they're going to need resources to do that. And um, so, you know, you know, uh, you know, making sure that um, a water utility can maintain its, um, you know, financial integrity is the most important thing I think that can happen uh, right now. Right, but we also have to look at things like Nickajack Creek and some of the other creeks that come in. I don't sure, right, right. Um, well, again, uh, Nickajack Creek, like that's gonna be an issue of dealing with non-point source pollution more so. Uh, and, and like I said, you know, I think one way that um, we can address non-point source pollution is thinking about how we manage stormwater. And one way to manage stormwater, and I know this is, a, my sense is there's a, a larger conversation about stormwater in Cobb County is um, is a stormwater utility, which you, there isn't a stormwater utility in Cobb. Is that correct? Right. So, I mean, thinking about. Um, not yet. Not yet. Right. So, so again, I mean, in terms of stormwater management, which will reduce non-point source pollution in something like Nickajack Creek, a stormwater utility would help finance um, and pay for stormwater um, facilities maintenance. There's a question from Mr. Warren. I think she he had made in a comment. I, can you share it, Mr. Warren? Oh, hi there. Yeah, I think you can hear me. Um, yes. Yeah, yeah. Um, I guess it's as much as observation as a question, but uh, the way I'm hearing this, um, yeah, I, I, I can see how the water quality and cleanup features could be established on a permanent self-sustaining basis centered on East Cobb Park all along the Soap, Car Soap Creek corridor. And I was just asking who, who wants to work together and set up a team. Um, but uh, I, I think uh, it could be self-sustaining. And, and uh, the reason I think so is I believe we could integrate travel and tourism with it. Uh, beyond the, beyond the uh, public funding functions so so um anybody anybody got any observations on that i think that is pretty much similar to what dr jim walton and his group with bolton parks and friends are somehow in relation is that dr jim walton can you relate um of, you know the, how your group have you know started and self-sustained with voluntarism and um well, the good thing, now. the good thing in Atlanta, we have this group called Park Pride, which works directly with parks. Uh, Park Pride has probably 65 different subgroups 
which becomes more uh, people on the ground, you know, taking care of certain areas, certain parks. And my area is just right across South Atlanta Road at Marietta Boulevard and the area from Peachtree Creek. And I kind of widen my area because Peachtree Creek to, to Proctor Creek, um, then up to the quarry. That's my favorite area right now. And, you know, it's just getting people who are taking care of, you know, local areas and getting more people involved. I think Cobb County has a great opportunity. Um, you know, the city's just got voted down here today or yesterday. And so now things are gonna come on the county level, commission level where things can be done all across Soap Creek, Nickajack Creek, all, all the different pieces that you know flow into the Chattahoochee, you know, are all important. And people in those local areas, and it might be something like a park, right, that you create that becomes um, you know, a you know, a greater river keeper, a greater creek creaker, creek keeper. <laughs> yeah, if you will. I, that, that's hard to say three times fast. Um but you know, once you get people on the ground, then it multiplies its efforts. Um, I'm getting calls now all over, um, so it's expanding, and it just takes the first little fires to build the big fires. And Mr. Warren can get in touch with you, Dr. Jim. Absolutely. For like you know Absolutely. details and I'll, I'll uh, put my information sharing, in here. Sharing like learning and stuff, so um, we can learn from each other. Anyone yeah, I'd like else? to have a, I'd like to have a chance to uh, speak directly with him, uh, and and maybe see what we can cook up. Thank you. Yeah. Anyone else in in this um, forum who wanted to share insights? If none, I would like to ask Dr. Chris, like with the interest of the academe, how how are you engaging the academe with respect to research R and D, and at what level are you going to that? Are you doing like I know that the neighborhood watch is the, you know, they have this, they have uh, schools have this science, technology, engineering, arts, math, the, the STEAM uh, part, and then the, the science part of that. I know my kids, they're doing this science small projects. Um, how, how is the Chattahoochee River Keeper collaborating with the academe, be it college, universities, high school, or elementary level? And what opportunities are there that science teachers are able to tap the, the resources available, either resource person from CRK to, to speak on, you know, this uh, environmental science month celebration. Yeah, so um, we are involved, um, the, the kind of the, the, the floating classroom that I talked about, these kind of boats that we have up on Lake Lanier and West Point, um, I, I know they're, they're uh, those are um, STEM-based programs for elementary and junior high kids that um, the course that, that we run is designed to kind of meet the Georgia standards for, um, I guess, some level of science. I, it's, I'm not familiar enough with the program to, to know all the details, but it is, a, um, you know, it is a, you know, kids spend about a couple hours, half day or so on the boat up there uh, and uh, kind of basically get their science curriculum, STEAM curriculum. We also, um, we are approached by um, you know, university students uh, for internships, um, and we also work with um, academics and, and professors um, on various research projects. Uh, you know, we started a, um, you know, most recently, uh, we were doing some, we were looking at microplastics in the river. Uh, it's kind of we, the first time anybody ever kind of come to us with this. I mean, you know, we went out, we just basically kind of, you know, if you imagine like a, a sieve, if you will, it's like really fine, mesh uh we just kind of went through the river and we you know you you're kind of we we're blown away by how much like tiny plastic you can pull out of the river downstream of atlanta um and then you know we also uh, we do collaborate with um universities to help us run some of our water quality tests so we we collect the samples and then we ship them off and um labs at the universities help us process the samples to help us determine like what is it we're actually looking at um that's specifically with with algae and, and chlorophyll um and so it, we also, you know, we we get requests to come into classrooms, uh, and so we, uh, depending on kind of the age group, you know, we have um, staff that um, you know do go into classrooms and you know give give talks about what it is we do and, and talk about water quality and whatnot as well. 
very good to know that at least like it's it's a welcome opportunity if people yeah. from from the communities would request uh resource persons from the uh, crk and you also mm -hmm. have flyers that you can give out like educational yeah. Sure, Fires certainly. Yep, and, and all of our um, all of our reports are available online, uh, like all the ones I talked about with green infrastructure and trash trap and kind of conservation and water efficiency. All that stuff is available online. Commissioner Jerica. All right, no one else, because after I do my comments, I usually will kind of signal the closeout. I had a question. Go ahead. Hey, um, so. Yes, you mentioned that, you know, to slow down non-point source pollution, green infrastructure is really important. What are some ways that maybe the community or the individual can really champion green infrastructure and start those plans? Um, I think, um, that's a good Talk question. Talk to your commissioner. <laughs> yeah, exactly, yeah, talk to your commissioner. And, you know, again, it's also, it's, you know, thinking about where, where to do it. I mean, there's, you know, you, you, you don't necessarily just want to kind of do green infrastructure anywhere. You kind of, you want to think about where it's going to be and, 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 and the impact it's going to have. But uh, so, I mean, if, if there are areas, for example, and like the, the, the picture I showed of that large, beautiful park, that's kind of at the, at the, at the beginning of, of Proctor Creek um, and kind of further downstream from that park, there used to be really, really bad flooding. Uh, and it was impacting people's homes and whatnot. And so there are a variety of these green infrastructure projects that were built in Proctor Creek to help alleviate some of that residential flooding. And so that's that's one way to look at um, green infrastructure is to say, you know, where are we having problems with flooding? Um, and, and then kind of turn around and look upstream and, and think about how you can kind of slow down <clears throat> the flow of that stormwater you know, above this area that's flooding. So that's that's kind of one way to think about finding a site for it. And then the other is um, just simply like when when you're kind of when you see large construction projects, uh, public parks and whatnot. Um, you know, there are always opportunities. Um, you know, like when when you're building a new parking lot at a public park, um, that's the kind of place that you can think about how do you build some of this stormwater management infrastructure into that actual project. Um, and so. You know, kind of just making green infrastructure like it's just another checkbox, you know, on a project list. You know, how are we incorporating, you know, green infrastructure to help manage stormwater and non point source pollution? Thank you. Welcome. One else? Yes. My name is Bart Kim. I, I, I got 1% right now, but uh, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you, Bart. All right. So I'm the owner of Greencrest Pool Management, and we deal with uh, pool management, and uh, we work pretty close with the health department in Cobb County, and Oh, no, we That's lost him, didn't we? Yet. Yeah. I was really well, intrigued to see what was coming next. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, hopefully hopefully he can reach out to me <laughs> independently. Yeah. I'm happy to talk to him. If uh, anybody, <laughs> yeah, let him know I'm happy to, to talk to him offline. Commissioner Jerica? No one else? All right, let's see if I can squeeze it in less than five minutes. So... First comment I wanted to make, yes, uh, double, double click on the policy efforts versus changing behaviors. Um, you know, I'm all for getting, you know, influencing and educating and getting people to be inspired to do something different. But at the end of the day, convenience is the game and how our systems are designed is going to be part of um, our success criteria on that. Um, also notice no Cobb County office question mark, uh, but definitely thought um, there could be an opportunity. So one of the initiatives I have is the library revitalization initiative. And the project idea for the East Cobb area is for it um, to have its own building, for the library to have its own building. One, it saves us a lot of money 
on our budget, but two, um, the new vision for the library is for them to be treated more as economic development centers. So where opportunities can interact with people. And truthfully, that's, how, that's what libraries already do. This is just really fortifying and enhancing that service. Um, so we're looking at doing an eco, a completely green friendly, um, green library, um, because it really represents the area around sustainability and canopy cover, green space, um, and certainly a lot of people that work in the tech industry in these cobs. So that's kind of the, the alignment there. And, and this would be kind of one of those, those first models. Um, so maybe there could be an opportunity there to establish um, an office space. Um, other things where I think we can partner, uh, the education program, I think that's something that we could bring into Cobb County if it's not already in Cobb. That was going to be one of my questions. Um, but certainly wanted to know if it was already in Cobb schools. If not, definitely want to make that connection. And um, also wanted to make the connection with the 4-H program, um, the, the uh, UGA extension program services within Cobb County. I think that's going to be a really great opportunity if we do partner with our education services. A neighborhood water watch program, I think that would be fun to do uh, in a localized area. I know Dr. Milton, we... Um, talked about expanding the Friends of Parks programs here. We do have several already, um, but to have a few more and uh, maybe that's something we can tie together that uh, the Neighborhood Water Watch program is also there. We can, we know where residents live, um, you know, maybe just interact with those individuals that are, that are nearby some kind of waterway and, and ask for if they want to be a volunteer as a part of that broader network. Um, definitely coal ash ponds, glad you brought that up. That's a big issue. Uh, while resolution is something that was, that's on the docket, it's kind of very low on my docket because I, I, want the, I want it solved, not just a statement. And resolutions are really just statements. They're just saying, hey, we want you to do better. Uh, they don't really solve anything. So um, certainly helping with those negotiations to, to get the coal ash ponds removed and um, at least lined, <laughs> but something there to, to help clean up the water. So certainly if there's any, any information you have, any insight you have in ways that we can get, get geared towards a solution, because obviously Georgia Power is in my district, it's in my backyard, all of it, both sterogenics and, <laughs> and the collage pond. So um, those, are, those are both on my docket. Uh, Climate change, climate change around um, local policy. So definitely there are opportunities at the local level because we touch that last mile, right? It's that last mile of environmentalism is the way that I look at it. And that's water, power, soil, air, uh, whether it be through coordination or what have you. So finding ways to really facilitate that last mile of environmentalism, that's, what I'm, that's what, kind of what I'm in the game for here. And then for everything else, it's an influence up, right? You know, relationships at the state level, relationships at the federal level. We have policy that we're working on on the stormwater front um, with the federal, with our federal partners. So certainly, if there's collaboration you desire there, we'd be happy to take some of your insight. Um, database, yeah, yeah, I, I want to see that, <laughs> um, and I know my residents would too. If it's real time. That's awesome. If it's not, um, I know we can get there because that type of technology is out there. I don't know if you're familiar with hackathons either. I'd be happy to partner and do a hackathon to get some new technologies rolled out around um, quality real-time testing. Um, also wanted to bring up, so you do the sampling, you send it off to the lab. One of the issues I find with that is the convenience factor. Um, I know even Home Depot has a kiosk set up where you go in and you're like, hey, well, you know, take your, you take this and send it to us. And like not that many people are going to be takers on that. So if there's a way to shorten that process, shorten that loop, make it where it's right then and there, I like kind of a pH test. That's where I would like us to get to. Um, on that front, there is a company that approached me a couple months ago. I was uh, very interested in having them be a part of some of our trails programs, um, but they're looking to do kind of a, they're, they're, Double bottom line, social entrepreneur, <laughs> um, they want free water for everybody, right? Because there so, there's a, a large percentage of people that don't have access to good, clean water. Um, so the idea that they had, um, that they've been 
you know, they've had, they've had a couple of successful pilots, um, was actually integrating kind of a glorified water fountain into the main and, uh, but they, they have advertisements on them, interactive advertisements. Um, so the actual equipment pays for itself and people are able to utilize that, but it comes with real-time data as they're using it. And it's connected, like I said, to the water main. So you, you're getting real raw data in that point to point location. Um, so obviously there's a ton of opportunity from a tourism standpoint that can go from that, you know, you get to interact with it. Like for instance, if it was at the battery, you can have the players <laughs> be there on the, these little kiosks and, and do scavenger hunts and all types of things. And when you do marathons and checkpoints. So, so there was a real opportunity on that side to utilize it, but also kind of look at solving that water, real-time water aspect for free, because this was something that paid for itself and there wouldn't be a cost to the county. Um, they, would, they even cover the installation cost. So that might be something interesting to look into if you're, I can connect you on that. Um, you mentioned the databases uh, where you'll, if you see an uptick in a certain you know, bacteria or something of the sort, are there automatic alerts tied to that was kind of my question. Um, and I know I'm pretty much out of time, so I'm just leaving the questions. Uh, I'm just going to keep going. Um, broken sewer, you know, those types of alerts would be really, really cool if they are connected to all of our uh, databases inside the local, our local county stuff. Um, litter, yeah, you triggered an idea on that side with um, thinking of like a Roomba for the river or something would be very interesting. Um, and then trash free, we are working on some trash free programs. So Disney did the study, you, you, you set the trash cans within, you know, you can, if you can see one, it reduces litter by like 80% or something like that. So uh, we're testing that out now in the Cumberland area to see if it reduces overall maintenance costs on that side. And then, um, you know, we'll try to expand that around as well. And, and perhaps it can be something that helps keep things out of the waterways. Stormwater study, yeah, stormwater is huge. Uh, at this point, I have like a 14, 15 point plan. I feel like um, that, that joke that was circulating several years ago about the 14, seven point plan in Congress or whatever. But truthfully, it includes a lot of aspects for what we can do around stormwater. Uh, one of those things truly being the green infrastructure. Um, so that's something of high interest for me, uh, especially in specific areas, how that gets funded. Those can be tied into SPLOS projects if need be. Um, obviously, a stormwater utility helps with things, but I want to see us get to the point where we have self-cleaning technologies because just because you have the pond there, just because the water is, is being retained to a certain degree, if the flow isn't cleared out, doesn't really matter. <laughs> um, you're still going to see those volumes just pile up on each other. So it's all of that. And for me, it's treating stormwater like um, the way we treat our road networks. It's a network. It's a flow um, from you know high points to low points and just making sure that we're not just looking at it at this piecemeal public versus private infrastructure. And I think Florida is a little bit ahead of us when it comes to that interpretation, Georgia has a lot of room for growth um, in, in how it looks at stormwater. Um, definitely, I'm going to look at all your other reports, public dashboards with data. I love that. Monitoring well, sure. I'll, I'll look into what data I can get for you on that. Um, reducing carbon footprint, that is a huge component to several of the initiatives um, within the policy areas. Um, our own energy sources. So one of the things that uh, is also included in there is for us to create our own sustainability code. Um, and this is instead of it, my, my thing is, is that right now it is kind of just a checkbox. Like, oh, are we green? Yeah, we, we, we reduce flow, great. Um, but sustainability code uh, would basically set up guidelines, like an entire new section of, of code and what that means. And so really trying to dig into that. Um, very interested in the fishing to recreational, very interesting answer, because um, he was, it sounded like he was asking for the more metro areas and your responses for the lower part of the river. I think there's an opportunity uh, within, you know, we have areas, especially in our 
suburban areas um, where I think recreational opportunities would be more of a desire. And then certainly the wastewater treatment plant um, from stormwater management, making sure that those things are up to date. Um, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm of interest in the bleeding edge when it comes to certain capacities like that versus the best practice. It just, we're talking about significant health impacts. So there you go. Those are most, all, almost all. So Dr. Notes. Chris, are, are, are you willing to be engaged <laughs> on board it? Because this is going to be like, Hopefully after this and we have the KIPCO beautiful, the county level staff, then we will be able to, you know, uh, integrate all of this and know as well what the offices are currently doing and what are the challenges, of course, that they're facing and how are all of these presentations from the different groups, especially the key stakeholders on water, soil, air, uh, in, in relation to the legislative agenda that Commissioner Jerica is trying to put forward. And, make an impact is sustainability of the plants is also like a big factor here so we're not just about which is not just about talking and advocating about sustainability <coughs> but the sustainability of what all of these efforts done now in the long run um, will also be a big factor and for your part um, policy policies uh, because she mentioned earlier about it's about investment policies procedures so I think you can really touch up with database information with respect to policies and procedures to help uh, Cobb County shape its sustainability awards, <laughs> just environmental justice agreement, and she just mentioned another one, the sustainability code. Yeah, I mean, we, I mean, we, we, would, we would be happy to be a resource and to be a part of helping you develop what sounds like a sustainability program for the county, um, kind of a sustainability you know, um, a vision, um, you know, uh, and a plan. So, yeah, I mean, we, um, there are certain things that, um, um, I think we are, you know, more equipped to, to, to be able to provide assistance with and, um, and we're happy to provide that expertise where we can. Well, with that, that, that is really the big thing with this, uh, meeting tonight to get to know your group and get to know what is in the heart of the commissioner and how it's going to impact Cobb County and connecting Cobb beyond just the county itself and how to move forward. And we hope to engage you all in the future when we get uh, the Cobb County level office uh, concerned and uh, start you know, uh, really like fleshing out the work. And uh, because Commissioner Jerrica Richardson already have the skeleton of, of this thing, but of course the inputs coming in from different stakeholders and to be integrated in that and the organization that will you know, the one responsible for it, uh, that will be very key. We're having back Mr. Barkin, Kim Green, and um, Dr. Chris said earlier that he would be happy to answer your question one-on-one. Uh, -on -one. We could send you, um, uh, Alea could send you an information of um, Dr. Chris Mangello if you are not part of that uh, email interaction with him. So, um, that will be taken care of. But for the interest of time, it's 8.08. We'll have to uh, close in. I think we have achieved what we wanted to just do tonight, learn, appreciate what's been done and how to collaborate moving forward with the common agenda that um, Chattahoochee Riverkeeper is doing what the commissioner wanted to, to do and the interests of the greater public with respect to sustainability. So thank you so much, everyone. Uh, a YouTube link of this uh, presentation will be made available by the team of Commissioner Jerrica Richardson. It's a pleasure again to learn and uh, interact with you all. Thank you so much, Commissioner Jerrica. Thank you, thank you. Thank you for having me, appreciate it. Really appreciate the presentation. Excellent work. Yes. Have a good night. Good night. Good night.